morning's reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16, and this can be found on page 1027 in the Church Bible. That's Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who is lying in the manger. ...of Advent. How Jesus represents that joy for this season and beyond this season. From the video clip that we looked at, we saw that a number of events and activities can actually bring joy and happiness into our lives. I got this description. An emotion in which we experience feelings ranging from contentment, satisfaction to bliss, and intense pleasure. And they've also been able to add that joy, it goes beyond that. It's, less, it's a less common feeling. It's got to be well identified. It's a feeling from within. And that is what I'm hoping to bring out this morning. As we celebrate Christmas, as we celebrate the end of the year, the event itself makes us happy. Not to mention the colorful lights that are going to, coming up already at people's houses, the bling bling, the shopping, the wrapping paper. I'm sure psychologists have a lot to say about that because we do experience happiness at various times of our life. And there's one example I, I cannot resist but share with you is that when a man has identified that lovely woman and is thinking I'll make this one, I want to make her my my fiancé, or get married to her, and he's planned everything, he's re done all his rehearsals, what to say, and that time comes. Now you are with the lovely girl, and you have to ask her that way you feel about her. And then she says, yes. It's a very great feeling. I can see some of you identify with that already. So the joy is from within. Joy comes sometimes when people have their first child. Joy comes when people have a wedding. I was very happy when I finished my first degree, you know, and you leave the university for the first time. You are excited. So joy and happiness happens in our lives because of various events and activity. But if you look at the verse 10 of Luke chapter 2, the scripture says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. There is a kind of joy for all people. There is a kind of joy that is beyond December month or the month of January. This joy is eternal, is everlasting. And that is the news that was brought to the shepherds when the angel said to them, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for the people. Let me read out to you how the psalmist also has described it in Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation. That is the King James Version. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. The joy of all people that the angel has brought is about Jesus, the baby Jesus that was to be born. And this Jesus is the main reason that we need to focus on as we look at this Advent season, as we look to the month of December. Because Christ Jesus is that gift of God that has come down from heaven. So that we associate this time with buying lots of gifts, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure I've got a, a long list as well waiting for me. But we have another gift, which is the gift of God. This gift of God has come down from heaven. And it's in the person of Jesus Christ. And this joy that Jesus brings into all of mankind is forever. This joy is for us to have abundant life. This joy is for us to wake up every morning and give glory to God because all is well. So I was a bit puzzled when the shepherds were afraid. There's something about do not be afraid about the coming of Jesus Christ. Even to Mary, she was asked, do not be afraid. Now, let me read Isaiah chapter 9 for you. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness, have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder, for as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that bonds them. They bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot has been used in battle, and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. Why? Because for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government 
will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. It will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty has accomplished this. Praise the Lord. We are very grateful to God that when the prophet was pronouncing this promise to the children of God, I wonder if they could picture it the way we are picturing it now. I wonder how many of them actually believed in it because of their present suffering and their present place of bondage. But the prophet prophesied anyway that this gloom, this pain, will come to an end because a child is going to be born. He will be the prince of peace, wonderful counselor, almighty God. And we testify to that today because we know Jesus Christ. We believe in him that is the Son of God, that he has come down from heaven to defeat death and sin, to set us free. His coming in was very humble, very unexpected, yet he is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. And by message this morning, is to ask, maybe there's anyone here sitting with us today, or somebody that is listening to the sound of my voice, to embrace this gift of God that has come down from heaven, just as I will embrace all the gifts that I am, 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 able, to, am, am able to get this Christmas. I don't know where they are coming from yet. I think I'm going to be probably pay, paying for most of it. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, I will receive them with love, with kindness, and with great joy in my heart. And that is why Jesus Christ has come as a gift of God, interestingly, to all of mankind, for everybody. What we need to do is to receive him to receive that gift of God. Now, let me tell you a few things that we appreciate in Jesus Christ. In the book of John chapter 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, I will remain, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my father's command, commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Jesus wants our joy to be complete. Jesus wants our joy to be complete. He wants us to be happy all the time. Not just at the end of the year. And you will agree with me that even at the end of the year, even as we see many people showing signs of happiness and merriment, they are not necessarily on the inside experiencing joy, unfortunately. Because Christ Jesus is that gift that can really bring that true joy into our hearts. Whether I get a present this December, I don't. 
I am thankful to God that I have that joy of the Lord in my heart. So Jesus says, I am that true vine. What else can we say about this Lord Jesus Christ? In John 10, from verse 7, he says, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. Jesus Christ brings that unique joy to our lives so that we have life to the full. He says, I am the door for the sheep. If you come through this door, you will find pasture. You will find peace. In there is everlasting joy. And now he says to us, the, key, the thief comes, it comes to steal, to kill. It comes to destroy. But I have come to give you life. That's the gift of God that is in Christ Jesus. In Matthew chapter 11, what is he saying? Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Christ Jesus wants us to be at rest in our souls. He wants us to be happy. This is why this gift is unique. It's a special gift from God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Jesus Christ is the gift of God that can give peace to our soul. In John 8, Verse 12, Jesus says and saying to the people, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. There is a light of life that we are able to enjoy in Christ Jesus. It parts our way, gives us the right direction, makes us go the right way. So Jesus says, I am that light. If anyone comes to me, you will no longer walk in darkness, but you will experience the light of life. I know for myself that until I found Jesus Christ, I've made decisions that definitely, if I had the light of life, I wouldn't have made those decisions. And I thank God for rescuing me because Christ Jesus coming into my life allowed me to acknowledge that it's possible to make wrong choices, to make wrong decisions. So Jesus says, I am the light of the world. In John chapter 5, John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. These are values of life. These are values that make us happy. I was sharing with a uh, few youths, well, my, my children actually, so I, I went to a, a Greek Orthodox church for some training, and I was taught how they do their Eucharist, the communion bread. 
And so I was given the bread to take home with me. And so I tried to share the bread with my children as we have communion as well. I guess what, they, they wouldn't eat the bread. <laughs> it's, not, it's not as sweet as the one we've been using. And, you know, it was a serious message to me on that day because this is a communion bread. We've been doing communion before. But then this is a unique bread, of course, which probably no taste to it at all because that's the way they, they do it. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't taste, they wouldn't eat it. So I tried to use the father voice to, <laughs> to get everybody to eat. Thank God for my wife. She, she ate a little bit. But they would not eat. But I had to break a little bit. I just, just have a little bit. And then what I then did after that was to let them know that this, this bread that we see here, there are parts of the world that if we left this bread on the table, people will rush for it. That was the image that God gave me at that time. That people will fight for this little bread here because of poverty, because of lack, because things are tough over there. So that is the picture that God gave me. And I thank God I was able to share with them. Because whatever we have, you know, rejoice in the Lord. Let's give thanks. I mean, I know the bread was, the bread was tasteless, but it didn't, it didn't matter to me because it's communion bread. That's much more significant to me than the taste. So Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. It's very interesting that whoever eats of this bread, you're not going to die. Why would I refuse a gift of God like this? Whoever eats of this bread, you will not thirst again. Remember, she said that Jesus, in John chapter 4, the woman at the well, she said, if only you knew who is asking you to give him water. It's only if you knew. In turn, you will leave your water aside and ask him for water. Because the water that I'm going to give you will make you to thirst never again. A woman was on a maternity leave and she's been out of work for six months. And so from the office, decided to pay her a visit. So when they came to our house to say congratulations for the new baby boy, they came with a card and what looked like a present, like a gift. She was very furious because the gift was not properly wrapped. I'm not going to mention the carrier bag that it was put in. She felt that she deserved more than this. She was so upset that she didn't bother to open the card. She didn't bother to, do, to look at what's in the card at all. And they left. To our greatest sh shock and surprise, when she then looked at what was in the carrier bag, it was one of those... Uh, I can't remember what it's called. You used to prune the, the trees in the garden. Hmm? Yeah. That's what is in there. She thought, this is strange. After 10 years working for this company, I can't believe it. I'm sure she was upset. She wouldn't receive that gift. And it was the following year well, was it the following year? It was the Christmas after that event that they were having the Christmas party. And then somebody said to her, so what did you buy with the money we gave you for the boy? She said, what money? She said, what? 
we, we, we left you some money in the car. Now she doesn't know where the card is. <laughs> then she said, I, I thought you brought me that gift for my baby. They said, no, that's not the gift we brought for you. That was your conversation with the gardener when a few months ago you came to the office and you said that the garden is looking very beautiful and lovely. And you asked him to get you a tool that you can use at home for your own garden. And that's, that, that was just on your desk. We just brought it along. That wasn't our present. She missed the present completely. I don't know whether she found the money, but it was a great lesson that because she misunderstood, because she has her own way of analyzing things, she left the real gift and focused on that which was not a gift, which was just an addition to the gift. So Christ Jesus is the gift of God that has come from heaven. That as we celebrate this year's Christmas, as we celebrate the end of this year, let's bring him to that focus. Let him, let's bring him up high there. Because he's the reason for the season. He is the reason for the season. He has come from God with love for all of mankind. And I hope we can share this love this season with all of our friends, our neighbors, family. In John chapter 6, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Christ Jesus is promising us that in him we have life. In him we'll find pastor for our soul. In him we will find rest. In him we will live forever. This is the joy that the shepherd was told about. They were told about. Don't be afraid for I bring you good news that will bring joy to all of mankind. Sorry, I got in yellow. What are we going to do about these things? So what did the shepherds, what did they do? When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. That is a good response to the gift of God, to receive it. The shepherds said, let's go and see. They could have carried on all night there, hoping somebody else would go and have a look. They could be playing cards and just think that this is not important. Obviously, for them being shepherds at that time of the night, they're hardworking people. They're very serious people. They could think about the money, the wealth, and their sheep, for instance, and think, well, that's just something that has happened. It's not serious. But they made a response to it. They made a response to it. And what I love there, it says, let us go. They encourage one another. I said, let's go and have a look at this thing. Let's put aside what we are doing now. Let's give it a go. Let's check it out. So that's why I said if you are hearing the sound of my voice and you have not 
gone to have a look at Jesus, the gift of God for this all of mankind. It's a good time to have a go. It's a good time to have that response. It's a good time to say, let me go and have a look and see this great thing that they are talking about. Jesus Christ is the love of God that has come down from heaven to give us life and to make that life to be abundant. God wants our joy to be full. Christ Jesus is the subject of that joy for all areas of our life. So as we enjoy the season of Christmas, as we enjoy the love, the peace, the hope that comes to us through Christ Jesus, let us also share amongst people that there is a greater gift beyond that is the physical which has come down from heaven which God has given unto us. I want to give you a, a few minutes or a few moments to just reflect on that message and I will pray.